the future is upon us. Tom Brands is excited about Iowa's 2023 lineup because they're bringing back talent while also reloading. We have a crop of recruits coming in that we're excited about. He knows that losing five former All-Americans is a real detriment, yet he's still optimistic. I'm excited to watch him compete. How many times do I got to say it? Iowa's lineup is going to look totally different than it did last year. So let's head to the whiteboard to see why Tom Brands is so excited about Iowa's lineup and why you should be too. I mentioned that I was losing five All-Americans and it's tough so let's get that out of the way first. Gone is Austin DeSanto, Jaden Ironman, Caleb Young, Alex Marinelli, and Michael Kemmer. These guys accounted for 13 national placements while they were at Iowa. So yeah, it's a real loss. But the good news is there are six guys returning to the lineup. So let's take a look at who those are. Do you like that transition? Well, you're really going to like this next part of the video because there are a lot of Hawkeyes coming back into the lineup. For starters, Max Mirren is looking to get on the stand for the first time in his career. Now, I'm putting a question mark by his name because I'm not sure whether he's going to be at 41 or 49, and I promise you I'll get to that before the end of this video. Where he's looking for his first time on the stand, a few guys are looking to get back on for another time. Anthony Cassiope, for example, at heavyweight, and Jacob Warner. Remember, Jacob Warner made the national finals last year and just barely lost to Penn State's Max Dean 3-2. Coincidentally, that's the exact same score he lost to AJ Ferrari to just a year prior at nationals. I'm not grateful I lost, but I'm grateful for the lessons I learned, right? And with those three guys being the top three at 197, it's going to make the weight interesting. And I'm telling you right now, put a hat on Jacob Warner because he's a threat. Now let's move on to another guy. And Anthony Cassiope can be a threat as well at heavyweight, especially since Gable Stevenson's out of the way, and those accounted for a lot of his prior losses. But one issue he's definitely going to run into is Mason Paris. He hasn't yet found a way to get over that hump and beating him. Cassiope went from a third place finish in 2021, then fell to a seventh place finish in 2022. So he's going to be expected to get back up. Now two other guys that are instrumental to this lineup are Nelson Brands and Abe Assad. Now, the good news about both these guys is they have experience on the big stage. Both Brands and Assad are national qualifiers in the past, so they've been under that pressure and may be able to perform better in the future. The thing I'm really looking forward to is seeing Brands actually compete for a full season at a weight that he's comfortable with. He's competed at 84 before, and then he dropped down to 74, but he also didn't have a starting spot in the lineup with Kemmerer there. So with a full season under his belt, I'm excited to see the results that he's going to be able to produce. And I know you're probably freaking out because I haven't mentioned this guy yet. Of course, that is Spencer Lee, the three-time national champion, the dominant kingpin in Iowa's lineup. He's as advertised still. He's the linchpin to this entire squad, and he's going after his fourth title this year, which would make him Iowa's first ever four-time national champion, a complete historic move. Whatever's next, what's next, and I'll be ready to go, so don't worry about me, okay? But you already know that Spencer Lee's the GOAT, so let's talk about a couple guys you may not know yet. For example, get to know the name Patrick Kennedy. He's a four-time Minnesota State champion who pushed Alex Marinelli to the brink at last year's Luther Open. He lost to him just three to two. Patrick Kennedy has had two redshirt years, basically. He's as advertised. Uh, now it's his chance to prove that again in the competition arena. He also beat a couple of national qualifiers last season and even placed at the Southern Scuffle. So that takes care of Alex Marinelli's replacement, but what about DeSantos? Well, I doubt we'll see Drake Ariola bump up from 25 to 33, so expect sophomore Colin Shriver to get the start. He had a winning record last year and even placed fourth at the Southern Scuffle. Yeah, he did have a few losses, but four of the five of them were all demerits to all Americans, so not too bad. At 157, there are a few few options who are all redshirt freshmen and multiple time state champions. Two time Arizona state champion Sebastian Robles fits in nicely or we could see two guys potentially bump up from 49 to 57. That's four time Florida state champion Brett Lee Reyna or two time Iowa state champion Caleb Rathjen. But bumping up or staying down brings on a whole slosh of new issues. Like will Reyna or Rathjen decide to wrestle off Murin instead and for that matter will Murin decide to drop back down down to 141 where he was wrestling a few years ago. Well, 141 is the last keystone piece to this whole lineup and likely the reason Tom Brands is so excited for 
2023. Not a good things. That's because in April, All-American Real Woods decided he would transfer from Stanford to Iowa. Let me remind you that Real made the semifinals at Nationals last year and gave Nick Lee his closest match of the entire season. With Real at 141 pounds, this gives the Hawkeyes a window of opportunity to seize against the Nittany Lions. So the best lineup is likely for Woods to stay 141 while Murin goes 149. No joke, this lineup is a legitimate threat to Penn State in a dual meet because Woods is such an influential transfer. When you step on the mat, it's for keeps. In fact, Woods is one of my top five impact transfers. And if you want to see who the other impact transfers are, you can check out this video right here.